Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, VJ. You're amazing. Thank you for leading us in praising God. God is so good. Give it up for Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Reggie Portiano, um, and I felt the Lord, he wanted me to speak on how God uh, saved me and, 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 and set me free from from the grips of porn uh, through, the, through, his, through his power, love, and grace. So God, through God's love, power, and grace, how he's saved me from porn. And um, I know what, Jesus, what God did for me, he could do for you. And I know a lot of people uh, struggle with pornography. It's, it's, a, it's an epidemic. It's taking out people. It's, it's taking out marriages. Um, it, it's just, it's a lie, it's a monster, it's horrible. And I know a lot of people who struggle with it. And um, just a little bit about my story. Um, I remember one time I was in college and I was, I, was, I was studying about like sin and how, you know, repul like how horrible sin is and how like repulsive it is to God, you know, sin and, and just like, and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like, I sin all the time. Like, I, 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 all my thoughts are always, like, perverted and always, even when I try to be good, you know, even when I try not to, like, think of, of lustful thoughts, I, I struggled. I struggled. Um, and I was wondering, like, gosh, how does, how does God, like, still love me, you know, even in my sinfulness? Um, and then one day, like, I went, he brought me, just maybe, like, a few days later, I went to Mass, uh, uh, daily Mass on a Friday where there was, like, a school. It was out in uh, St. Michael's in, in Poway. And I remember they, they had the, the children's Mass, and I remember just, like, kind of sitting in the back, and they were, the kids were all singing, all the, all the little kids singing, and they just sounded like angels, right? I was so amazed. It was so beautiful. And I remember after mass, you know, I'm just kind of kneeling, and I'm I'm right in front of like a like right in front of me is an aisle, and so the, after the mass, the kids are all lining up, and I'm kind of kneeling, and so I see them lining up, just minding my own business, and one of the kids, you know, cuts in front of the other little kids. It's like five year old kids, you know, five year old kids, and um, or six year olds, but he cuts in front of the other kids. And, and, and the other kid hey, says, hey, no cuts, no butts, no peanut butter jelly haircuts. <laughs> and I was just like kneeling there and I was just like, it melted my heart. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. So beautiful. You kids are so innocent. How can I learn from you guys? Can I just, you know, learn from you guys so I could be innocent again too? I was thinking that, you know? And I remember God spoke to me then, and he was like, Reg, like, that's how I see you. You're my beloved little son. You're my little beloved child. That's how I see you. Not how I saw myself, just like, you know, my perverted thoughts, like, just my sinfulness. Um, but that's how God sees us. He sees us as his beloved children. We're adorable in his sight. He delights in us. And it was just powerful to know that, that even in my sinfulness, that God still sees that potential of, of me, of, of, of just that little one, you know? That I, I can, like, he doesn't see me in my sinfulness. And so it, it, was, it, was, it was powerful and it was beautiful. Um, and so part, part of part of growing up like so the reason why I felt like so sinful is like grow, growing up you know I started watching porn at a young age like my my, my dad had a uh, had a stack of pornography you know when I was like five years old I remember getting through them and even when I knew how to press the play button right on the on the on the on the beta it wasn't VHS it was like it was like see, it was not VHS but it was what's it called and I was pressing, you know, the play button, watching porn, not knowing what I was watching. But I remember just growing up, like, thinking, man, like, I just, I was like, something's, like, off or weird about me or so. You know, I, f I felt kind of like, 
you know, is this normal, you know? And, and um, um, I, I kind of had a conversion. Part of my testimony story is I had a conversion when I was, when I was in seventh grade. My dad left my family, and, um, um, and our family tor- turned towards God, and I started reading Scripture, and that's how I got to know our Heavenly Father through, through Scripture. Um, the, learning about his love for me, that he's for me, learning about mercy. And I was able to forgive my dad for leaving our family. Um, and so, uh, and then from there, like, uh, I'll just share this. Like, I, I came a verse, I, I came across a verse in Psalms 68, 5 or 6 or so. And it says, uh, how God is the father to the fatherless. And I remember asking, like, those words, like, jumped out at me. You know, my dad left, and I was like, oh, when he left, I was like, okay, you know. I didn't feel close to him, you know, at the time, because he was always working. But I knew I needed a father to teach me to be a man. I knew I needed a father in my life. So I remember asking God in my own words to be my father, you know. Um, And so, and then in ninth grade, I, I, I... there was like a retreat, and at the climax of the retreat, there was, um, you know, we meditated on the passion of Christ and, and how much he suffered and died for us, how much he bled for us. And, and I really experienced God's love and his mercy, and I was like bawling and in tears. And afterwards, I felt this, this great sense of joy. Um, and so th- those were part of my conversions. But even throughout that and then the, the, into my college years, I struggled with pornography and masturbation. And, um, and porn is a lie. Porn is a lie. Everything about it is a lie. You know, uh, JP2 says, uh, I remember hearing J- a quote from JP2 talked about how uh, the bad thing with porn is not that it shows too much, is that it shows too little. You know, it doesn't show the, the love and responsibility the truth and, and um, uh, what's called the commitment, you know, of what, and, and, and the, what, what, what how, how beautiful and, and what um, sex is, is, is made to be. You know, God made sex and he made it good. It is, it is sacred. It is, it is holy. It is, it is good, you know. And within the context of marriage, within two, where two people love each other and are committed to each other, love calls for commitment. Love calls for truth. Um, and, and, and so, like, porn is a lie. And I struggled with porn um, throughout my college years. And I remember, like, trying to, to battle it. Like, like in college, I, I started going to daily mass. And um, just to say, I'll give you some tips. I'm going to give about 10 of them. And one of them was, like, just was the sacraments, you know, the Eucharist, devotion to, to Jesus in the Eucharist, whether going to daily mass and receiving him, um, being with him, um, and uh, what's it called, or adoration, um, that helped me out a lot. And just a scripture, scripture, the word of God, um, and then also confession, you know, um, God, there was a point where it's like, I went to confession so much, you know, just from falling you know, and, and realizing and getting back and up again and then falling and then uh, getting back up again. And sometimes you'd fall and just not want to get back up or so. But it's like God kept on calling me back to him. And God is so merciful and so good. Um, I remember, uh, like, I think for me, I've sinned so much. I feel like it, it would be a bigger sin for me to doubt that God could ever, like, could, could not or would not forgive me, you know? God is so quick to forgive. He's so good. He's so merciful. No sin is too big or too great that he cannot forgive. And so also one thing that kind of helped me out was devotion to Mama Mary. You know, uh, through, through praying the rosary, um, that really helped me out and helped me just to kind of purify my mind and, and see women, you know, not just as objects, but like, you know, of just of, of my sister, of, of, of someone to love, my sister that I'm called to love, you know. Um, and uh, I remember I read a book called True Devotion to Mary. That really helped me out a lot. Um, 
you know, Mama Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And wherever Mama Mary is, is the Holy Spirit is. And so that helped me out a lot, just the sacraments of the Eucharist and confession and uh, devotion to Mama Mary. But I, I, even through that, I still kind of struggled. I still would, would backslide and, and kind of fall. And, um, but I would say what, there, was, there was more that helped me out. Um, like I would do um, a thing where I would consecrate myself to, to, to Jesus through Mary. And where I would, I would I say a prayer and I'd have to email you guys this prayer, but it was just a powerful prayer, but it's just like consecrating my, my body and mind, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart and soul to, to, to Mama Mary. And, um, you know, because it's like what you put in you will come out of you. So if you're listening to music that's, you know, that objectifies women, that's, that's uh, a lot of sexualized music out there or so, like it, it will bubble up. If you're watching TV shows where everyone's hooking up and stuff, you'll like it will bubble up in your mind. You'll think like, oh my gosh, maybe maybe I'm wrong about being chased. Maybe I'm wrong about you know um, trying to stay pure. You know, so those things will bubble up. So it's it, it's it's important to consecrate to give your eyes, your your mouth, your ears, everything uh, to to the Lord, and. Um, and, and so that, saying those prayers helped me out a lot. Um, but I, I would say there's more, you know, there's more. Um, I, by the grace of God, like, God has saved me from porn. It's been about, like, 15 years, 15 years since, since the last time I looked por at porn. That's, like, amazing, you know? I know a lot of people struggle with porn, and it, it's, it's very difficult for people. And, and, but I, there is freedom. There is freedom in Jesus. There is hope. And what God can do, has, is doing for me, God can do for you. And I know it's all by God's grace. I can fall tonight. I'm the first one to, to turn, you know. But just being dependent on God, knowing how much you need God, not knowing how much you need God and, and, and turning to him, and calling upon him. When you call upon, the more you call upon God, the more he shows up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the more he shows up. So continue to call upon God. And so that was during college. But after college, I did a school of mission and evangelization, uh, which was in Rome. And I've shared this before, but I'll share it again for people who haven't heard this. I did a formation school in Rome which was a nine-month formation program for evangelization. And I lived with 10 girls, 10 guys from all over the world, and we studied the faith, we prayed, and we went on mission. We went, um, we, we, like, we had three big missions throughout Europe and a few missions in Rome. We lived right by Rome, behind the Vatican, and, um, and we, we praised every morning, and we had mass, daily mass, and we had adoration for one hour adoration with Jesus uh, for one hour every day. And it was such a transformative year. And looking back, it was like a life, it was like a nine month life in the spirit seminar, you know? It was really being immersed in, in the Holy Spirit, really immersed in, in the life of, of, of God. One of the first things we learned about there, which is one of my other points, Point number five was, was the love of God. Knowing God, that God loves us. That God is with us. That he, he accepts us. You know? And I know we hear it. We hear it all the time. Yeah, God loves you. But it's like, we have to have that encounter. We have to be convinced. We have to know, um, know that we know that we know. You know, we have to encounter Christ. God wants each and every one of us to encounter him, to experience his love, his goodness, his mercy. Um, and so we learned about love and how God loves us. And, and uh, there was many things in, um, uh, that, 
that just kind of were eye-opening for me because like you know I was able to we we all know the words we can spell it backwards but it's like to fully believe it like not just in our mind but in our heart that's a different thing and we're on that journey of faith I'm still learning and growing God is so big and so great I'm I, I'm, I'm still learning about that but um, one of the things that was was so pivotal I remember uh, midway through the year that nine months like I, I fell you know I fell into masturbation and I felt really bad and you know I went to confession I remember I was in confession and I confessed my sins and there I was in adoration and I remember just being like prostrate like on the ground you know even though I went to confession I still felt bad I was like oh man God Lord I just man I still felt bad and and um, I felt the Lord saying so he said this to me and this was so huge he told me that he's like Reg like, I forgive you, you know, and, and, and I want you to, you know, he's like, if I forgive you, then why can't you forgive yourself, you know? And it was so huge because, like, I, from that moment on, I realized that God accepted me. Even in my sinfulness, even though I'm not perfect, he accepted me, that he loved me. And that, that was huge about being loved and accepted. You know, that be, about being loved and accepted by God. We don't have to be perfect, already, like, we don't have to be there yet. God's going to meet us where we're at. And he's going to walk with us where we're at. Amen? Come on. <laughs> Come on. And not that he wants to just accept us and leave us where we're at. He wants to walk with us where we're at. And he knows that with, with God, he you know it's possible. With God, it's possible. All things are possible. And so that was just huge for me. That was so eye-opening, that really realizing that, that, that God accepts me where I am, I'm at. You know, and because we have that tendency, like when we're down, and I, I, like I remember when I was down, it's like, you know, I don't know if it was the devil or so, but it's like, you know, or myself that wants to like, you know, kick us down, keep us down, right? Oh, Reg, you know, you just did it again, huh? You know, you're just going to do that again. You're just going to sin again. Oh, might as well stay down there, you know? <laughs> but when I realized that God loves me, accepts me, and it, it just helped me to like, you know what? It's all good. Let's, you know, brush my shoulders off and get up. Get up, you know? It's just a little hiccup. You know, God's not like, he's not the one going, oh, shame, shame, shame. That's the devil. That's the devil. When you hear that, when you fall down, and, and you fall down spiritually, and you feel like, oh, shame, shame, shame. You know, that's the devil trying to keep you down. That's not, that's not God. God wants to pick you up. He, wants, he sees our sin and he wants, he doesn't look at our sin and say, oh, shame on you. He's like, he wants to free us from it. You know, he sees that we're entangled in it, into our addiction, any sin, he wants to free us from it. He wants to give us new life. He wants to pick us up. And, and so that was just so huge to know that the Lord accepts me, even though I'm not fully there yet. And that helped, that from that moment, I was able just to, if I ever fell again, you know what? Popped back straight up and just moved forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. You know? Shoot. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He's so merciful. So that is, is a key right there. And I hope you guys keep that, you know? Just knowing about God's love and his acceptance for you, you know, whenever you fall. And so, like, you know, Scripture, Scripture is so important. You know, knowing God, knowing God, who he is, how good he is. You know, when, when, when Jesus was tempted in the desert, the devil, the devil tried to trick him. You know, the devil was tempting him. And he was using Scripture. He was using Scripture. And Jesus combated that with Scripture, with the, with the, right, with the right interpretation. So the devil wants to keep us dumb. He wants to keep us ignorant to, to God, to who God is, to his goodness, to his love, to his promises. 
And so if we, if, if we don't read scripture, if we don't know Christ, if we don't know him, we could easily get fooled and tricked by him. So it's, it's so important to, 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 to continue to grow and to learn uh, in, and, and, and build that relationship, that friendship, you know, through spending time with God, through prayer, through scripture, through the sacraments. Um, and um, so that's an, one of them also, scripture. And then, so at that year, um, so it was such a pivotal year, you know, it was... It, it was a, like a life in the spirit, you know. It was a, it was like a life in the spirit, um, like for, like for nine months, like school for nine months, to be immersed in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit, in the life of of, of being set on fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. I, I really believe the fire of the Holy Spirit is, is what like just is what kind of changed things is 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 that extra is that you know is god god wants to give himself to us he wants to give himself he promised the holy spirit he promised the holy spirit so we can receive him that fire of god the his love his love they talk about how his love is so hot that whatever you know that it's it, it's it's on fire so that's when it talks about you know the fire the bat being baptized with fire, with his Holy Spirit, with his Holy Spirit, and, and being set on fire with his love. And, and, and the scripture talks about like that refiner's fire, that purifying fire. The fire of God is God's love. So being immersed in his love, letting that love transform you, change you. <coughs> Baptism, they talk, we talk, um, is like it comes from a word I forgot what what it is, but it's like baptismo. But it's like they talked about like the the pickle. It was used for like that was the same word as like pickling, you know, immersion. How they you know put a, a pickle in 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 the pickling stuff, whatever it is, you know, uh, vinegar and all that other stuff, and it, you know they immerse it, and this cucumber is immersed. And it's, it's changed. It's no longer just a cucumber. It, it's pickled. It, it's transformed. And you can't turn it back. And so, like, being immersed in, in the Holy Spirit, in, in the life of the Holy Spirit, it, is a process. And, and God is, is moving. God is working. You know, you might think, like, oh, gosh, I haven't improved that much. But, you know, if you look, you know, back where you were a year ago, right? Where you were six months ago, where you were five years ago, like you're, you're being transformed. God is working, but continue, continue to press in, continue to, to, to keep on pressing in, um, and, 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 and being, um, just immersing yourself in, in the life of Christ. So the Holy Spirit, the fire of God, the fire of God is, is one of the, I think, one of the keys that has helped me to, to, to be chaste, to stay pure, and um, to, to, conk, to break me free from my addiction of porn. Um, and one of the other things, uh, point eight is, would be praise and worship. You know, praise and worship is just powerful. It's a way to fan into flame right? Fan into flame that Holy Spirit to be set on fire. The Lord's giving you his fire so, and just to continue to fan, to praise and worship, to, to worship him, to love him, um, to, to fan into flame that fire. Um, another thing I would say too is uh, being like, just understanding the trans transformation of your mind, renewal of your mind. We talk about that in Romans uh, 12 to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And, and so like understanding like, like theology, like when I came back after the school of mission in Rome, we, you know, I was part of the Gretti group and they talked, uh, as a group that was talked about um, purity and chastity. And, you know, they, they really like taught about like theology of the body. And actually we, there's, teachings here on Theology of Bodies uh, this Saturday is the last um, 
this Saturday um, is part three of the Theology of the Body of Sessions. I recommend you guys to go if you, if you guys don't know that much about Theology of the Body. But um, Theology of the Body is, uh, was just learning about that and how we were made for love. We are made for love. And, and, and love is our greatest desire. Um, nothing in this world, all, all the pleasure, all, all the sex, all the money, all the power, all the pleasure will not satisfy us. Only God can satisfy us. Only God can satisfy us. So understanding also just how we were made for love. We were made for more than sex. We were made for love. Love is our greatest desire. And the love of God, and God teaches us how to love, because God is love. Amen? Amen. amen. I can get the amen there. Um, and so being transformed, understanding, you know, like, you know, you, what you really want, you, what you, your, really, your true desire is love. You know, it, it's more than sex. It's more than sex. Um, and it, it's good that you, you desire sex. It's good that you are attracted to the, to the opposite sex. It, it's, it, that's, that's perfectly fine. God made you that way. Um, I, I, looked at, I look at it like this. Like, <laughs> like um, it's good that we have like that little fire, that like little campfire in us, you know. But we can't let that campfire, you know, we can't start pouring gasoline on it and, and and letting that gas fire turn into a forest fire and, and letting it consume us, right? Um, and um, so transformation of the mind, understanding like that we, that we do, that our, our greatest desire is, is love. Um, whenever I get tempted now, you know, I'm married now. Uh, and, you know, I can, I can still easily fall into sin and... and of, of pornography, of lusting after other women. Um, whenever I get like a random temptation or so, um, you know, what is it like, you, you know, when you're just kind of like waking up or so, when you're like half asleep or so, you know, um, whenever I get, whenever I do get like a temptation or just some random thought or so, you know, I just repent of it right away. And, and I give it to God, you know, and I, I reorder, like, I was like, no, Lord, I don't, I don't want that. I want you. I want you. I want your love. Like, this, th this won't satisfy me. This won't, this won't bring me peace, love, hope, joy. This won't fulfill me. Like, I want you, Lord. And I give, I give you this desire. I give you this, this random thought or this lustful thought or whatever it is. Lord, I give it to you, Lord. I, and I, I give it to the Lord, and the Lord takes it. The Lord takes it. And it might be a couple times I might have to do that, you know. But the Lord takes it. And, and he could do the same for you, you know. Um, so that's just huge. And then another thing, number, uh, point number 10 would be... Um, Living out the mission. Living out the great commission. God is, has, has called each and every one of us, every Christian, you know, to, to, to make disciples of the nations. He's called to partner, to, for us to partner with them in finding the lost sheep. You know, some of us, you know, we used to be that lost sheep, and then we used to be that 99, but now God's calling us up and out to go find the lost sheep. He's given us a mission to, to make disciples, disciples of the nation and, and, and to share his love, to share his goodness. You know, where would you be if you didn't have your faith right now, if you didn't know Jesus? You know, there's a world out there that doesn't know his hope, that doesn't know Jesus, his hope, his love, his salvation. And he's, he's calling you, he's called each and every one of us to, to be a witness, to be a witness, you know, and, and every one of us has a story. Everyone of us can just share, can give of our lives, can be a friend, right? Every one of us can be a friend. Every one of us can give our smiles, to give our time um, uh, to people. And so having that mission, 
number, like that mission and that purpose is so important. You know, I know so a, a lot of Christians and Catholics who don't know their purpose in life, right? Who are like, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know my purpose. This is, if you, if you only knew that Christ has called this, called each and every one of us to this great mission, there's nothing greater. There's nothing more adventurous than to share God's love. To share his joy, to share his salvation. And I, I have like so many short stories where it's just, whew, it's just amazing. Shoot, I'm going to have to share the story. Do we share the story last? We did, the one we're in Vegas? Okay, I'm just going to have to share the story. I'm going to have to jump a little bit just to give glory to God. Um, so uh, we went, VJ and I went to uh, Las Vegas um, two weekends ago. Um, for a funeral, but so we went out to dinner one evening, and then after dinner, I was like, VJ, let's go praise. Let's go praise on the Las Vegas Strip. We did it. And we did it, you know, and, and um, it's like, <laughs> for about two hours, we praised on the Strip. We were praising. We found a spot that was like, that was high traffic area, and there was like a little like stop crosswalk, so people were kind of queuing up for the crosswalk, and we were just praising. And I had a sign, I had a sign on my guitar case that said "Need Prayer," and another sign that said "Jesus Loves You," and then also like another sign that said like free, you know, stuff. I had like little Bibles and cards and medals and rosaries to give out to people, and so we're praising. And every few songs, every two two songs, like a person would come by and ask for prayer, and we pray for them, you know. And it was just it was just so humbling. It was so humbling just to pray for people, you know, and um, to be Christ's light in, 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 this, in, this dark, in that darkness over there. And so there were so many, like, we had so many great encounters, but one of the, an awesome encounter we had is that when, after we were done praising, we prayed for this, this, this lady. Her name was Dest, Destiny. <laughs> her name was Destiny, and she, 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 her parents were Catholic, but she didn't grow up Catholic, you know, Some, something like that. You know, she didn't know her faith at all. And so we asked if we could pray for her, and she's like, sure, yeah, I'll, like, I'll take some prayer. And so we prayed for her, and we just kind of said a, s a short, simple prayer just for God to, like, you know, um, for her, to, for God to show her how much he loves her and for God to give her her peace. And, and, and we said some other things. But then it's like, you know, she experienced like I asked her, oh, yeah, she experienced God peace. Oh, how do you feel? She's like, oh, yeah, uh, that, that was nice. Thank you. And then I was like, you know what? You got knee pain? And she's, she's like, no, I don't got knee pain, but I got, I got pain right here. And she like, you know, it was like a back of her knee. And so, like, we prayed for her knee. I prayed for it, and I just said a short commanding prayer uh, for it to be healed. And, like, she, she was like, wow, okay, thanks. That's great. You know, it felt better. And then, <laughs> and then, um, I don't know if it was like a, maybe a word of knowledge, but I started sharing about how like, you know, God can transform your life. God can transform your life. Like I have a friend, she suffered from depression. She suffered from suicidal thoughts for the longest time. But the Lord transformed, had changed her life and brought her out of that. And just to give glory to God. And then she's like, you know, yeah, I, I, I struggled with that. I struggled with that. And so I was like, wow, okay. And so I, I, I got a rosary and a, and, a, and a little pamphlet, had a rosary for my bag, and I gave it to her, and I shared her a testimony of how God um, brought my friend out of depression. One of my friends, he, he, want, he, he marked the day. Like, he started hearing voices, and he um, uh, dropped out of school, got really depressed, and um, marked the day on his calendar of when he was going to jump off the Coronado Bridge. And then someone like his aunt, like, said, oh, hey, Gave him a rosary and said, hey, pray this every day. And so he started praying it every day. And, you know, little by little, he stopped, he stopped hearing voices. He, he stopped, he stopped, um, he got out of his depression. He rolled back in school. And then one day he was looking at his calendar and he realized, oh, my gosh, that day passed where I was going to jump off the bridge. And so I shared that with her. And she was like, oh, thank you. And we just shared with her and we shared with her the gospel. You know, I gave her a little... Uh, a gospel card just explaining the gospel because she didn't really know about Jesus. And I gave her a Bible, you know, um, kind of sharing about 
and then and then she's like, you know what? Um, can you pray for my other knee? Like, and I'm like, all right, cool. You're like, yeah, sure. We'd love to pray for your other knee. Because she, like, her other leg was, was hurting. And so VJ drops down, and she starts praying for her knee. And I'm looking down there, too. And then, like, she just says a short commanding prayer. And then we kind of waited a couple seconds. And then we look up. And then when we look up, Destiny's like, what's going on here? Oh, my gosh. She was, like, so shocked. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. And so <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was so it was such an amazing testimony. It was so awesome, God showing up. And, and you could do the same. You could do the same. And we, we love to train you guys. We love to train you guys on how to do that. But I just kind of just gave you the blueprints of, like, how to do that, you know. Um, um, but so just... It, it was amazing. I, I got her contact, and I, I um, just try to keep in touch with her and connect her with, uh, with, with, with. I, ga I gave her some stuff, and I, I'm just going to try to uh, follow up with her too. I, I've sent her some uh, uh, a text and other stuff. But anyways, having that mission and that purpose is so important because, it, first off, Christ calls us to it, you know, and that that is the Christian life, and and and. How many of you know is that, is that like, when, when, when we have that, that, that mission at hand, we can't do it by ourselves. We got to be dependent on the Holy Spirit, you know? We need the Holy Spirit. We need the fire of God. We need the fire of God. And so that's why it's so awesome to, to, to praise him. You know what I mean? To fan into flame. And also to live out the mission. To be on fire. To stay on fire. To stay on fire. And, and I really believe that was like the, the one of the, like the, that just crushed it right there for me. That, that has kept me uh, free from, from, that has broken me free from the grips of, the grips of porn. And I can, and, and I just give all the glory to God. All the glory to God. And what God has done for me, he could do for you. And, um, you know, if, if you ever need prayer, if you, ever, if you ever need someone to walk with you in your struggles, you can email me. Um, I'll send my, out my email. But, like, it, it's, there is hope. God is so good. Um, and so um, I, yeah, just praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so, I guess, you know, shoot, let's just, um, I would just like to also impart, you know, what, what, what God has given me, you know, to you guys. So, if you guys would just like to receive, just, I just, um, uh, if you'd like to receive, just uh, have your, uh, sit yourself in a, a position to receive, maybe with your palms open. And we're just going to pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with your fire. With your love. Your all-consuming fire, Lord. Your refiner's fire. We're desperate for you, Lord. You're all we want. You're our greatest desire. Yes, come, Holy Spirit. Just invite you to just ask, just ask the Holy Spirit to come, come into your hearts, come into your life. Come, Holy Spirit. I just declare freedom. I declare breakthrough. To break the chains of, of addiction. That you may see yourself as, as Christ sees you, as his beloved child. That 
that he's so proud of you. That he wants to free you and, and he doesn't look to condemn you, but just to love you and free you and strengthen you. Come, Holy Spirit. I just impart to you, to my brothers and sisters, the, the fire you've given me, Lord, your, your refiner's fire, your purifying fire, Lord. I give you, I impart to you my, my spirit of uh, just your, the boldness you've given me, Lord. The gift of evangelization, Lord. Just the gift and grace to break free from addiction. From pornography and any sexual sins. We honor you and bless you, O oh Lord. We give you all the praise, all the glory. We love you. Amen.